<clears throat> Just popping to the bathroom. Guys, your boy Benny. Let's say the person you hate the most on earth comes over to your house and you're sitting there in your kitchen with them and your wife. You're having an argument. And you turn to your wife, you're like, they're wrong, right? You have my side. You got my back on this. You're my wife. Okay? I wifed you up. And your wife's like, no, actually, actually, you know what? I'm kind of I'm on their side. I'm on their side. This guy that you hate so much, I, I like him. I like him. I like him. And I'm not, maybe I'm not going to pick a side, but like, um, you, you know, you're wrong, actually. You're wrong. Can't back you up on this one. But that'd be, that'd be a bad marriage. That'd be a tough time. But let me tell you what. In the battle between two people that hate each other, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, and the corporate media, which should be married to Kamala, right? You would, you would assume would be on Kamala's side. Yo, I got to tell you. Bad days for Kamala Harris because the Washington Post today, of all places, the Washington freaking compost, as some call it, have refused to endorse Kamala Harris. <laughs> Following a very interesting trend of Kamala losing friends very, very quickly in the in the in the unholy marriage between the corporate Democrat Party and the corporate media. Now, maybe this is because media is failing. Maybe this is because people like Jeff Bezos realize that the only way to run a correct business is to do it the way that Elon Musk does it, right? Like the only way to do it is free speech, allowing everyone to talk, allowing, allowing free ideas to flow, okay? Within reason, within legal reason, within the boundaries of the law. And, and, and realizing that Donald Trump has hundreds of millions of supporters. The Washington Post is a degenerate leftist rag that speaks to a shrinking echo chamber of lunatics, mentally disturbed people, and overly medicated people. And that's a bad business model. And Jeff Bezos is a man who clearly likes making money, not losing money. Now he's lost lots of money on the Washington Post, and he's brought in a team to change everything. Check this out. The Washington Post won't endorse in White House race for the first time since the 1980s. Uh-oh. Even though the presidential race between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris is neck and neck, the Washington Post has decided not to make a presidential endorsement for the first time in 36 years. The publisher announces on Friday, we are returning to our roots and not endorsing presidential candidates. Will Lewis wrote in an opinion piece published by the paper's website. He referred to the paper's policy from the decades prior to 1976 when following the Watergate scandal, the Post broke. It endorsed Democrat nominee Jimmy Carter. The last time the Post did not endorse a presidential candidate in the general election was 88, according to the archives. Colleagues learned of the news from the editorial page editor, David Shipley, at a tense meeting shortly before Lewis's announcement. The meeting was characterized by someone at the de direct knowledge of the discussions on the condition of anonymity to speak to internal matters. Shipley said that he told other editorial board members uh, Thursday that management had decided that there would be no endorsement though he has known it for weeks. He added that he owns the decision. The reason he cited was to create an independent space where the newspaper does not tell people who to vote for. Colleagues said they were shocked and uniformly negative. Post-corporate spokespeople have not responded to multiple messages. The former Washington Post executive editor, Martin Barron, who led the newsroom to a claim during the Trump presidency. Oh, really claim? Well, business is failing, idiots. Denounced the decision. This is cowardice in a moment of darkness that will leave democracy a casualty. <laughs> oh, this is just great. Jeff Bezos, by the way, uh, praising Donald Trump after Trump's assassination attempt. Um, maybe it's a maybe it's a change. I mean, it's, listen, he's not he's not a Republican, but it's um, you're starting to see like sort of a marked sea change, in, and it is so good. You know, one of the best unifiers is success. When you're successful and when you're winning, everyone wants to be on your side, right? Everyone wants to wear your logo. One of the greatest moments of deconstruction, atomization, and the capacity to like gut check and see if you're on the wrong path is failure. 
Like when you're failing and when you're miserable and when you're losing, then nobody wants to be on your side. And what's happening right now is major news companies like the LA Times and the Washington Post, LA Times famously also not endorsing Kamala Harris. Two more LA Times editors quit after owner calls off Kamala Harris endorsement. Amazing. Uh, editors are quitting and resigning. Good luck. Good luck. Editorial board members uh, quit after the paper refused to endorse Kamala Harris. Isn't that amazing that they, these like, these newsrooms are expected. It's not like a question of will they endorse Donald Trump. The question is, why won't you endorse Kamala Harris? That's just straight up Marxism. This is so disruptive and insulting to your own readership. There are hundreds of millions of Trump supporters. I hope there will be hundreds of millions of Trump voters this election. But either way, there are hundreds of millions of people who support Donald Trump. We speak to them every single day in our man on the street, man on the streets, and they make the decisions. They're your customers. They're the people who read your paper. No, you shouldn't be endorsing somebody they all dislike. In fact, if you're smart, you should be deeply considering endorsing President Trump. Since 76, the uh, the paper has endorsed every Democrat presidential candidate, and they refuse to endorse Kamala Harris. Ooh, the, this, is, this is the sound of democracy living in the light. That's right. The light of day that says that the candidate that you put forward is a Muppet and is stupid and is low IQ, and we don't want that running the country. Washington Post will not be making an endorsement of any presidential candidate this election, nor will future presidential elections. We will be returning to our roots to not endorsing presidential candidates. Good for them. Good for them. Uh, yesterday, uh, Jennifer Rubin, uh, big time lunatic at the Washington Post, uh, applauded uh, LA Times editors who resigned from their paper. Is she going to be doing the same? Huh? Kamala Harris, Trump is Hitler. Washington Post and LA Times. He's Hitler, but man, we're not endorsing you. <laughs> oh man, the meltdown has begun. Please, please, re you can quit at any time. Please quit. There's so many newspaper jobs out there, by the way, right now. So many jobs at newspapers right now. A member of the Washington Post editorial department tells me, Bezos' decision to not endorse is an outrageous advocate of his popularity. Democracy doesn't die in darkness. It dies when people are anticipatory consent of a fascist web. Ah, ah, salt, there's salt in my eye. Oh my gosh. Kamala sucks so bad, Washington Post won't even endorse her. Here we go. What do you mean Washington Post won't endorse me? <laughs> oh man. WAPO refusing to endorse Kamala. This is a big deal, and it shows that Kamala Harris might be too ridiculous, too absurd, even for the regime. They may have conduct, uh, concluded that they're better off simply regrouping in 2028 and redirecting efforts towards crippling Trump's presidency. But this also shows how disingenuous the Trump-Hitler stuff is. If they actually believed a small fraction of it, obviously they'd endorse no matter how absurd. This is a great point. Washington Post did just endorse Donald Trump. That's a, th th also a fantastic point. Washington Post endorses Donald Trump. WAPO resignation exodus in... And ironically, they will all have to pitch their Elon hitting sub stacks on X. That's right. Let, let, let go. Quit. Please. There are so many newspapers left. Please. Media's a tough business, man. I beg of you. I beg you. Quit your job. That's right. This is the worst thing to ever happen. Trump is Hitler. This is how bad. Let go. Please quit. Quit your job. Okay? Try it. Try, try doing independent media. Try it. Media facing historic levels of distrust. LA Times and Washington Post staff are freaking out that they can't tell people who to vote for this year. But believe me, we already know who you want us to vote for. We just don't listen. Trump team viewing that doing the uh, victory round here as Axios is talking about how Democrats know that they are blowing it today. Growing number of top Democrats tell us privately that they feel Vice President Kamala Harris will lose even though the polls show a coin toss finish. Nah. No, it shows that uh, <sighs> it shows that they're doomed. Yeah, it says they're it says they're in a bad they're in a bad way. A common gripe among high 
level Dems is that Harris does a nice job of explaining why you shouldn't vote for Trump. She just struggles to explain why you should vote for her. Uh, I don't agree with that, but fine. I agree with the second part of the statement. Kamala Harris gives you nothing to vote for. Kamala Harris has given the firefighters union nothing to vote for. They snub Kamala Harris with a non-endorsement. Also, J.D. Vance spoke at their uh, convention. Meanwhile, the Teamsters Union did not endorse Democrat for the first time like in like 50 years. The Teamsters Union members, however, have voted and they are showing by double digits in every swing state that they support Donald Trump. Michigan, 30 points. Wisconsin, 20 points. 30 points in Pennsylvania. Georgia, 30 points. Arizona, 30 points. They want Trump. Teamster Union, Teamsters are cowards by not supporting Donald Trump, but who cares? We understand that your non-endorsement means that you're endorsing Donald Trump. The non-endorsement of the LA Times, Washington Post, Teamsters Union, Firefighters Union, this means you're supporting Donald Trump. This means that Kamala Harris has failed. You don't have to prove a positive. You just, you didn't endorse Harris. That means Harris failed. That means Trump won. Trump plans to visit, states Trump plans to visit before election day. Virginia, Minnesota, New Mexico, New Hampshire. These are states, at least one of them, that Trump could realistically steal. You can't find one Trump state, Florida or Ohio, that you could say the same thing about Kamala Harris stealing. This is such a great point. Kamala Harris has no campaign events. On Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, she had one rally in Georgia on Thursday that was a disaster. And then one rally in Texas up against the World Series, idiot. She's only doing one rally in a swing state in four days. Stupidity. The New York Post has endorsed Donald Trump in an amazing cover right here. Back to the future. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> you just got to laugh, man. Because we were in the hood in Atlanta yesterday, and we saw it ourselves. Trump is getting record levels of support among young black and Latino men. They, like the MAGA hats we were handing out went like hotcakes. The polls are breaking Trump. I mean, you can see it. You can see it. Look at that. New York Times has it as a tie. How horrifying for Kamala Harris. This is what real clear politics shows as the most likely electoral map. This is devastation. This is all of us going home at 9 p.m. The New York Times now has a tied race, a bloodbath, in fact, because Donald Trump has improved with every single demographic from 2020. Every single demographic Donald Trump has done better at. And here we go. I'll close on this with Mark Penn. Polls are a snapshot in time and underlying changes. The New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Forbes polls show three to four point movements in the direction of Trump in the last few weeks. This is real movement, real momentum that is really going to close. It's closed. These are substantial moves. That's right. The races are moving to Trump. Not they're moving away from Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, we just we just couldn't be happier that all these people, all these Washington Post, dusty old Washington Post people, that they are crying right now. Your tears. They fuel us. It's Rip Benny. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's go. Away.